Hi friends. I owe you the tale of my trip to Sicily and I am taking this moment when I have a meeting coming up soon and a headache to tell you. Because <laughs> why not? So the thing I asked myself the most about this trip is when did the first sign start showing up that maybe things were going to go poorly for me? And I think it started with the winter storms. So <laughs> I didn't get to hike the first part of the year for the most part because the storms were really bad and a lot of the trails near me were closed. And that's me making excuses because I could have gone out in my rain gear. But it is harder to motivate yourself when it's super stormy. So there's that. And um, then after that, let's see. I, I, I have notes. Handwritten, of course. With a fountain pen. Um, but a lot of people were like, you shouldn't worry, you hiked so much last year, it'll be fine. So I was like, yeah, that's probably all right. Um, and then, the, um, all the booking of everything, that went okay. I had to do most of that in Italian. And... That was certainly a sign that I was going to meet a lot of people who spoke only Italian or mostly Italian, which was fine. Something that I didn't really absorb was that people were going to speak to me in Italian and say things that I wasn't expecting to hear and thus didn't know what they were saying and thus didn't know how to reply other than Mi dispiace non parlo italiano and no capito, which means sorry I don't speak Italian and I don't understand. <laughs> I think the next sign of sort of ill omen, um, the weekend before my trip, I had my backpack all loaded up with almost everything and I took a test hike. I did 12 miles. And I hurt my back. And it wasn't really bad. It was just sore along my spine. And I thought, eh, it'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. Um, I was wrong. So, uh, it stuck, a, like it didn't clear up after a day or two like I thought it was. Um, and then... It was still hurting up until the day I left. On route to the airport, I got a text message. I was maybe 15 minutes from home at this point. Um, I got a ride there, so not like I was driving. But I got a text message that my flight was delayed three hours. And I did think to myself at that moment, is this a sign? This is this a sign I shouldn't go through with this? And I said to myself, Maria, you're just afraid. Don't run from your fears. Embrace them. You'll grow through them. And then my dad called while I was in the car. My dad doesn't call me. Um, we talk, it, you know, there's nothing wrong there, but it just, I immediately went into, oh no, what's wrong? But then he was asking about what I was doing the next weekend or something. And I thought, maybe this is a sign. Maybe I should stop what I'm doing and go see my dad. And again, I said, Maria, don't run from your fears. So I got to the airport and um, 
The flight was delayed further. Another hour. And I will say, when I got up, when I realized, like, this is going to take a while, I went up to the person at the counter and I said, I'm worried about my connecting flight. I allowed for over four hours or right around four hours between landing and my next flight, my connecting flight, because I don't like to have to rush and I don't like missing flights. So three hour delay made me nervous because that was only going to allow one hour between flights. Then it was delayed further. Then boarding took forever. And they had told me, by the way, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Um, so, y'all, obviously, I missed that flight. So now I'm in Istanbul, which I don't have a visa for. Oh, sorry. Um, wait. There we go. And what am I supposed to do? At this point, I'm, you can, I hope you can understand, I'm pretty tired also because I was on a flight for 13 hours. Um, and it was 6 o'clock at night is the whole time. Is that right? I don't know that. Maybe it was the afternoon. I'm not sure. But I got there and, and they were like, oh, okay, well, go talk to people. You'll get a new flight. No big deal. Well, the next flight, there was a group of us who missed this flight. And we were all pretty irritated that they didn't hold the plane because we missed it by 10 or 20 minutes or something. And it's like, man, there was a group of us. You could have held this flight, but whatever. So the next flight, the, the soonest flight, was at um, early o'clock the next day, 6 or 7 in the morning. And um, I it was like, okay, great. And then what do I do? So they tell me, just go over here. You'll go to the Turkish Airlines Hotel. It'll be fine. So I do that, and they're like, yeah, you're going to need a visa to leave the airport. So then I had to go pay for a visa, then could go back in line, then get this shuttle to the airport, which was or shuttle to the hotel, which was like 45 minutes or an hour away. And then I find out, they're like, yeah, your shuttle back to the airport, it gets here at three o'clock in the morning. It was basically not worth my while going to that. I probably would have gotten more rest had I just stayed at the airport and found, like, they have reclining chairs there and everything. Like, the Istanbul airport is huge. <sighs> so, that stunk. <laughs> Welcome. To and then when I landed in Palermo, it was storming. It was rainy and gray. But I will say that it was beautiful. I, I remember thinking, wow, I never want to leave. Spoiler. I did not continue to feel that way. Um, so the good news is, the one great news is, because I missed my first night in my hotel in Palermo, since I wasn't there, um, I was able to check in early because the room was still mine. And I had told them, like, as soon as I realized I was going to miss it and that I didn't wasn't going to need the shuttle, I was like, hi, all this stuff happened. And they were like, okay, well, we'll have someone pick you up, et cetera, et cetera. So Palermo was great, mostly. Um, there was a lot of dog poop all over the place. It's, you know, my friend was like, what is... What does Palermo smell like? And he, because it was raining most of the time, I'm like, I said it smelled like petrichor and dog poop. Um, so, for the record, my back continued to bother me. Um, but I thought, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine, right? So, basically, I hadn't gotten a lot of sleep, and I let myself take a nap. That was a bad choice. 
I felt like the trip was a series of bad choices, one after another. Um, however, in hindsight, not all of the choices that I thought were bad immediately, well, not immediately, obviously, or I would just choose a different thing, but, you know, not all of the choices turned out to be bad, even though they felt bad. Um, so... I went and got my little passport stamped for like, you were here, you started the thing, and that was very exciting, and I uh, got the cash I was going to need to pay for all the places I was staying, because a bunch of them I had to, was going to have to like basically pay cash, pay euro, euro, um, so I took, I, I reserved a spot on a bus because all the advice is like, don't walk from Palermo to the first place, Santa Cristina Gela, because it's over, just most of it is paved roads. It's not a good walk. I looked at it on Google Maps and I was like, mm, I think I believe them. Having then taken the route on the bus that I booked, that was absolutely the right choice. I would not have wanted to walk along there. So that was a that was a good choice. That bus took me to um, Piana degli Albanese. Where's Albanese? And the route from there to Santa Cristina Gela, I couldn't orient myself because I got off at the wrong stop. The the bus made it look like there was one stop. There was like here, here, here. It made it look like there were five stops. There weren't. I don't know if these stops that the bus was stopping at were actual stops or if the bus driver just knew that people liked to get on and off there or what, but I got off in a wrong place because a bunch of people got off and I am apparently a sheep. Well, I mean, they knew the area and I didn't. Don't be hard on yourself, Maria. Anyway, so then I thought, okay, well, Google Maps will tell me where to go. And it did, except for, so here's something that Google Maps doesn't always get right. They had me walking down a road that was one lane each direction. I don't know if the speed limit was like 50 kilometers an hour or 100. I just know the cars were going awful fast. And there was no sidewalk and not much shoulder to speak of. So that was an adventure that I wasn't intending for. Um, but that walk, there was a part of it that was like, I wish I hadn't been on there. And then there was a part that was like way more hikey and I was walking along nature and there were dogs barking at me, but they were on the other side of the fence. Oh, I forgot to tell part of the story. Should we back up? We'll back up. Back to the bus that I was telling you about. So I was waiting uh, I bought the, the ticket at the, like, train station in Palermo. And I was waiting for the time for my bus to come. I had, like, an hour. And I saw these two women who had all this hiking stuff. I was like, that's cool. And they saw me looking at my Mania Via Francigena book and started talking to me. And apparently, they had just turned back from the hike because of the weather. And because it was proving to be more difficult, like, she was like, we expected a hill, but this was a wall. And then apparently there was something happening with, like, stray dogs. There was an event with them that was not safe. So I was nervous, and I thought to myself, is this a sign? <laughs> These two younger women can't do this, and I think I can you got this girl. Then I was waiting for the bus and a bus pulls up and it says the thing. And I'm like, great. I'm waiting there. Bus doesn't leave. And I see a guy come and he gets in and I'm waiting. I waited there for two hours and he didn't leave. And finally I was like, Hey, what's going on? He didn't speak English. And he finally was able to convey to me that I had been waiting in the wrong place because apparently there are three different bus stops and I was at the wrong one. So I finally got on that bus, finally was doing the hike, and then it was it was kind of great. I saw sheep, and I got into town, and I was, like, exhausted, not from, like, just kind of mentally exhausted, so to speak, not physically. And my back hurt, 
And then the woman from the, the B&B that I stayed at showed up. And I did the thing where I, like, hugged her and kissed her on her cheek, which you're not supposed to do with strangers. What was I thinking? I still kind of beat myself up about that, but I need to have grace. I was out of it. And she, cause she was like, are you okay? <laughs> I kind of feel like. So I got into the bed. Like I, I was finally like, okay. And I laid down and my back muscle was like spasming. And I just asked myself, I have 15 miles to do tomorrow. And this is the 15 miles that like made these two women turn back. Can I do this? If I make it there and I can't go on, how am I getting back to like civilization? And I didn't know the answer to that. There's no bus that I know of that goes there. I checked. So I had the horrible realization that I couldn't do it. That I could maybe push myself, but it could be really a bad decision. So I pulled the covers over my head and I cried and felt bad and felt like a huge failure for like half an hour. I let myself have that time to just feel bad. And then I started making new bookings for what am I going to do for the rest of this trip because now all of the places that I arranged to stay, I can't stay at because I can't get there. So that was, I still feel like really bad about it. I really wanted to do this, you know, and I really wish I didn't have to make that choice, but like it was the right choice. The reason I know this is it is now two months later and my shoulder, by the way, it's moved from back to shoulder. So I think actually what happened is I hurt my shoulder lifting my bag so much because I was worried about my back. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> it turns out don't get old. That's my pro advice. Or somehow avoid the aging part of getting old, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, the restaurant that I was recommended to, by the way, in Santa Cristina Gela was amazing. I got a spritz since I realized, well, I don't have to hike. I can drink. So I had a spritz because, of course, they gave me too much food and I felt bad about not being able to eat it. And then I forgot all my leftovers in the fridge in the place. I was like, well, and... Um, so I had to cancel all my bookings and like tell people, sorry, I'm not going to be there. I hurt myself. And what I did was um, I could have done two things, right? What I needed to do was find a place to stay the next night, right? That was like right now, what am I doing tomorrow? So I thought, do I want to go back to Palermo and stay there? And I thought, well, I saw Palermo and it smelled like dog poop. And no. So where can I get to? And I thought, hey, Messina. Why not? It, it's there. Maybe then I can go to, to mainland Italy. So I found a... I'm looking. And for the record also, I had only my phone and I had no Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, if like... If, some of you may do everything on your phones. I rely heavily on my computers. So I'm used to having like two monitors and I'm comparing things on both of them. And having just my phone, I felt so like this is suboptimal. And possibly I should have tried to get other people to help me with this, but I didn't know who could. Um, but... I I find I found so what I was looking for was at least I was going to have to find two places because the place I, I found a place in Messina but it had it had availability the next night but then not for the rest of my trip so I couldn't have stayed there all the, the time until um there was I planned on ending in Catania and I was like can I stay at this one place from here until that check in I couldn't so, 
I think the next, two, like two days later, I thought to myself, what I should have done was just book into Messina and then from there figure out what I wanted to do. Because what I was thinking is, you know, I should have, uh, I should have gone to mainland Italy. I could have gone to Napoli, to Roma, somewhere, you know, like that would have been achievable for me. There, there's, uh, overnight trains, I could have got a, a plane, but I just thought, I don't know if I want to deal with booking more travel. I definitely don't want to deal with a flight. Do I want to deal with like finding trains and then finding places there? And, and um, places in mainland Italy are more expensive than Sicily, um, which was, at this point it was like, whatever. <sighs> So Messina was lovely. Oh, I didn't mention this. It rained every day I was there, by the way. Every day it rained. Every single day. <laughs> it's not supposed to rain that time of year, friends. I I checked. You're supposed to be able to do this walk that time of year. They recommend that time of year because it shouldn't be rainy. But lo and behold, I got lucky. So I really liked Messina. Um, wait, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta kicked out. Wait, that didn't work. We got that wrong. It's fine. So, um, one second. Okay, we're back. Um, so I decided that my backup plan was, or my new plan was, I spend these days in Messina, then I just go, because the hotel I had was finishing my trip and they had a, a space, so I was thought, I'll just go there to Catania. There's day trips I can take from there to Siracusa, to um, some other places, Taormina. Um, and... I liked Messina. Of the places I went, it was my favorite. My sleep schedule was a mess. They eat dinner at usually the same time that I eat dinner, which is like 8 p.m., but my sleep schedule was a mess. And so by 8 p.m., I was kind of like, am I really going to eat right now? <laughs> I'm so tired. So for the record, I heard, I did did not eat nearly enough wonderful food. I didn't drink nearly enough wine when I was there. Like, it was sad. I didn't have nearly enough cannoli. I tried to have a cannolo in every place, but I was not super successful. I think I had only five. What is that about? So I liked Messina. It was pretty. Um, and... Then I, so the last, oh, the other thing is, you know, obviously I had to do laundry every day, which was kind of a bummer, but, you know, these things happen. So I went to look around at where I stayed in Catania, and what I had forgotten was that the place I was staying was not in Catania proper. It was an hour and 15 minute walk from like the downtown area of Catania. And at this point, my back hurt when I walked. <laughs> so being a tourist, when you are having a hard time walking is difficult. <laughs> so, There was nothing around this hotel, y'all. I mean, I did walk to a really pretty Castello. Um, and anyway, I looked at my flights before I went to Catania. The night before, I was like, there is nothing to do. I am not having a great time, and I'm in pain. I wonder if I can change my tickets home. So I went on the website for Turkish Airlines. I hadn't heard anything from them, but the website informed me that actually those tickets I had, 
I was going to need to change them because due to some operational changes, they weren't going to happen. So now I didn't have those flights home. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Am I stuck here now? <laughs> I, you have to understand, I'm laughing now. I was crying then. So I bought a new ticket on an airline that I knew had a good reputation. However, what I didn't realize at the time was that there was a portion of the flight where I was flying from Catania to Schiphol that was not operated by them, unfortunate. That plays a part later. But um, yeah, so I bought it a great expense. I bought a new ticket home. <laughs> but I felt like such a sense of relief of like, ah, this is gonna go all right. <laughs> so anyway, I go to Catania. I had an hour walk. Um, to the hotel and of course my back was hurting me and I felt really fortunate because the night before I was like you know what I'm gonna Google says I can do this but I'm gonna Google Maps the route and make sure I can do this and that it's not like sketchy so I did the whole route this turned out to be a good thing because when I got off the train in Catania I suddenly for the first time had no service so now I'm in a foreign country where I don't speak the language. I also no longer have Google Translate and I have no cell service. And maps can't give you turn by turn directions if they don't know where you are. So GPS still worked, but I'd have to like pull up the map and look at it, which is, you know, anyway. So I felt really glad that I actually knew the route from doing like the walking down it in, in maps the night before. I got to the hotel, no big deal. Went to the, the that night. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna have a nice meal. I had the mixed fried seafood. I had a big old canolo, and oh, a cheese and meat platter, and some wine. And I got food poisoning <laughs> that night. I woke up so sick, y'all, so sick. And I was texting with my mom, and she's like, do you want me Pepto? And then I remembered, yes, I do. <laughs> so I tried to, so I stayed in Catania, and then I'm terrified to eat in the hotel restaurant. There was nowhere else to eat, but I ate there again, and I was fine. And who knows, like, maybe it was one bad little sardine or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see I tried to check in for my flight and I couldn't oh but and, and then I was like oh no what's the weather like and that's when I discovered that actually a tropical storm had gone through parts of Palermo were flooded parts of Emilia Romagna where Rome is Napoli all that area that coast were like super rainy and flooding and evacuating <laughs> So it turns out that decision was a good one. I should not have gone there. So good job, me. On the flight home, they didn't even, I got to the airport. I had no service because their Wi-Fi was broken. I bought a SIM card. This turned out also to be a bad idea because I just got a recurring charge for it that I'm going to have to talk to some people about because they didn't even set me up with an account. And I can't cancel an account that I don't have. And um, they didn't open check-in for this flight for like hours and hours. So there's a group of us and we're standing in line and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Anyway, the flight was delayed. Of course it was delayed, y'all. This was me. When I got to, oh, and when I booked the, the flight, they were like, hey, do you want lounge access? I was like, yeah, I want lounge access. Then maybe I could sleep there because I had a nine-hour layover. I was getting in Skiphol pretty late at night, and I was leaving fairly early in the morning. And um, y'all, I came in in one gate, branch, section, and left from another, and they got me lounge access from the other one which was on the other side of passport control, which was closed 
all night. So I couldn't get to the lounge. The only comfy chairs were next to an area where they were literally doing construction. There were saws. I swear to you, I heard the beep, beep, beep from a truck backing up. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. My flight home, I didn't, I couldn't sleep. For one, it didn't feel particularly safe, but for two, how could you next to sawing? Anyway, my back was also still hurting. By this point, my shoulder was hurting me too. So, um, flight home was from Schiphol delayed half an hour. That's fine. What's half an hour between friends, you know? By the time I reached home, I had been awake for 40 hours and I was exhausted and very glad to be home. And, um... I'll be honest, I can't wait to go back to Italy. But I hope that next time there is a little less adventure in my adventure. So, sorry for this rambling and long exposition, but there it is. Did I use all the stuff that I brought? No, but I was glad that I had it and I used quite a lot of it. So, <laughs> there we are. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>